So you went to visit Korea, or you went to live in Korea, and are wondering if Korea is actually a right fit for you. Let's find out. Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Hope. Um, in this video, I want to share with you guys the pros and cons of living in South Korea. I have been in Korea for five years now, and I'm going to be sharing the pros and cons from my experience. Yeah, I hope you enjoy. Let's get into it. We're going to start with the pros, and then we're going to do the cons last. <laughs> I was going to say cornrows because I have cornrows. <laughs> okay, biggest pro about Korea is actually the safety. I have mentioned before in my video about the culture shocks about Uganda and Korea that I experienced here and it's like safety is really like a big thing here um, let's say you go to a cafe and you want to go out you can leave your stuff there, you can leave your wallet, you can leave your phone you can leave anything there, people leave their notebooks there and come back later and you are going to find your stuff intact by the time you come back it's really like a great thing like koreans have this kind of responsibility and way of thinking that when they find your stuff in a place nobody thinks that i should take it i think they just what comes into their mind is somebody is actually using this place i i can't use it which is very good and also it's not like 100% because of hard their stalkers here, but as a girl, you kind of have this confidence of going ho going home even at a late time and actually reaching safely uh, because, you know, it's like you just know nothing is going to happen to you on your way, on your way back home. There are also like CCTVs almost everywhere, so it gives you this confidence and comfort and security that you are going to reach home safely or you're going to get to your destination safely so yeah best thing about Korea is the safety <laughs> like it's really good mm -hmm. number two is affordable health care um, there is a lot of clinics in Korea it's like you can just easily go to a hospital and get high quality medical care and it's also affordable you don't really pay too much when you have insurance your medical bills are going to be less you know and also even if you don't have health insurance you can actually still access your medical care you may just pay more than if you had insurance but it's still not going to be a very extravagant bill unless you're doing those maybe like a surgery or those high-end medical procedures that really cost a lot of money it's readily available and affordable for everyone to use and that's a good thing that's pro number two let's go to pro number three number three is going to be the efficiency like korea has efficient systems in place which is very good like everything is so seamless here here everything is so convenient um there are convenience stores that run like 24 hours a day in the so if you want to get anything at night like in the middle of the night you can go to a convenience store and get something you want to drink in the night you can go to the convenience store and buy a drink and also it's like you can do anything from your phone you can reload your card you can buy and sell your stuff order food it's like there are apps for almost everything and also the public transportation is like very smooth they have these apps that tell you when the train is coming when the bus is coming how long you have to wait where to transfer how to quickly transfer all these things have been thought about and put in place to make people's lives easier and living here it's just sometimes it just feels so easy because of this efficient system that have been put in place um for example last time when i went to the immigration office for my visa and i had to print just one paper and the immigration office actually has computers and printers in place so that when people want to print anything 
they don't have to go out and look for a place to print from you can just print there and that is something that's really thoughtful and nice because I know it's not a very common thing and I get to appreciate it because I know if I was in my country I'd have to hustle for some of these things so having them here just makes life easier and yeah makes you appreciate the country even more buses sometimes have like charging ports where you can charge your phone bus stops have um wireless charging stations it's like these small small things that have been thought about and put in place to make people's life people's lives easy that are very nice the next pro is diversity in the food when you are going to a new country you worry about food often right will you like it will you not will it be up to your test will it be not but one thing i've come to appreciate about korea is the diversity in their food it's like one thing can be cooked in so many different ways and it's very amazing for example let's see chicken we have fried chicken of course <laughs> korea i think has the best fried chicken it's really good and there is let's say takalbi takalbi which is spicy chicken ribs there is samgyetang which is ginseng chicken soup uh, there is taktori tang there is chimtak um so all this is chicken but cooked in different ways and everything is different it's like when you eat it it's chicken but different so you get a different feeling and yeah i think that's really good the next pro is that korea is actually big on entertainment i can say um even if it's not like going to like shows or musicals you can actually just have like small sized fun you know like going to uh, norebang which is the karaoke uh or <clears throat> going to video games there's so many video <laughs> video game places where people go to play video games um and of course there are very many beautiful places to see very unique and beautiful cafes which many people come to see um pro is the door locks <laughs> like for example my door lock is you know a touchpad where you just have to put in a password and your door opens and this is really good because I don't need to carry my key I do not need to be worried that I'm going to lose my key and I'm going to be locked out of my house because I just need to remember my password and I'll be able to get into my home because it makes life easier oh well, that's all for the pros I had for you guys let's get into the cons so of course the biggest con about living in Korea is language barrier in that if if you don't know how to speak Korean life is going to be a bit harder for you that's obvious um it actually also depends on your environment and work if your work doesn't need korean then you don't need to be like advanced or if your school doesn't need korean you don't have like you don't need an advanced level of korean you just need like general understanding of daily like the words you use in daily life um you can also just maybe get a friend like maybe a korean friend or a friend that's good in korean to help you with things that are like <clears throat> that involve documents where you need to have a good understanding of what you are actually signing for also don't beat yourself about it if you don't know korean before coming here you can always learn here it's okay <laughs> number two is that it is very expensive to do your hair here <laughs> your hair <laughs> it is very expensive to do your hair here as a black person there are salons here when i came to korea in 2018 i think the best place you could find people to do your hair was itaewon nowadays there have been you know people springing up in different parts of korea that actually braid hair the only issue is that they are actually very expensive um for me i'm not willing to pay like a hundred or two hundred dollars just to do my hair my hair grows out like pretty quickly in just a week it's already looking old and i just spent a lot of money on it i thought about it and i decided that wasn't working for me that's why 
I try and do my own hair nowadays. By the way, I do have hair on my head. I guess I look like I don't. Um, yeah, but if you really have no problem with spending the money, that's fine. Because actually doing the hair yourself takes a lot of time. And yeah, you weigh your, you weigh your options. For me, my option was doing the hair myself and I'm good with that. The next thing is that it's not actually easy to find like black girl hair products in Korea. Um, Coupang, which is the ship the shopping platform that I use often, Coupang has this option where it ships in some stuff from the US. So it also has some of the products that we use, like sprays and curling cream and gels. So I sometimes buy these from Coupang, but Sometimes you want options, right? <laughs> but it's kind of limited in that sense. And sometimes they are actually really expensive on there as well. Um, so that's a, a big limitation. If you are maybe coming to Korea, try buying yourself some hair products. Come with them until you figure out how you are going to leave when they get done. That will give you a starting point as you figure things out. Apartments are kind of expensive here, but the issue is that with Korea, you have to leave a down payment before you enter a house. It's like you give a down payment and then you also have to pay rent monthly. Um, if you don't want to use this option, you can use the other option of paying like a large sum of money and then just living in the house for... For whichever amount of time you guys are grateful but the issue is most times foreigners don't have this kind of money and what we settle for is you know the down payment and then paying rent every month although you get the down payment when you leave at the end of your contract but it's still like a prerequisite and sometimes the money is a lot so if you can't afford it then things become kind of hard for you yeah and there is also some limitations to foreigners, I can say, um, where foreigners are not allowed to access some services. Uh, for example, there are banks where I cannot get a Visa card or MasterCard because I'm a foreigner or because I'm Ugandan. I'm not able to use, you know, the best, not best, one of the very common transaction money transaction services called Kakao Pay. Um, that's a service many people use in Korea to like transfer money, pay for things. It's like everywhere that you don't need to, you know, transfer money from your bank account and send it. You just use that service. It's kind of easier. But I'm not able to use that because I'm Ugandan. I think there were some issues with people from my country before. I don't know, but I am paying for the we pay for their sins. <laughs> it's like we are paying for their sins. Um, so these kind of limitations kind of affect us in some way. During COVID, we were not allowed to go to some, uh, let's say, restaurants or cafes. Generally, some places just because we're foreigners. And it didn't matter whether you have been in Korea all this time or... And you didn't like go for a holiday it just didn't matter as long as you were a foreigner you weren't allowed into anything and that was not nice it's like I've been here living with you all <laughs> but thank good corona is done we can access most things though I have heard from people that still foreigners can be refused from entering some clubs which isn't a very nice feeling you know but those are just some of the things you can um, expect here. I just hope that as time goes on, Korea becomes more open to foreigners. It's really doing a good job, especially in like the advertising, the modeling. I feel like it's trying to embrace, you know, foreigners and diversity more, which is a good thing. Um, yeah, so let's have hope. The next con about living in Korea is the fine dust. Uh, there are times when the quality of air is not good at all. 
and you can get messages on your phone informing you that the air quality today is actually very bad in africa let me not generalize in uganda <laughs> i'll take uganda in uganda we have like dust like you can just see it like it will go into your face and you can touch your face and actually see the dust like it's there but in korea the dust is like you can't see it which makes it i think worse and it's not good for like health if you have um breathing conditions if you have like health conditions it can kind of affect you so sometimes the government sends like messages letting us know that the air quality is going to be very bad but you can also check from your phone it's moderate so it's not so bad but sometimes it's like bad and in those times you need to maybe carry a mask with you just to be safe you know because it's fine dust it can easily like get into anything exposure to fine dust can result in various health issues including coughing breathing difficulties tightness in chest irritation of the eyes nose throat which can lead to serious respiratory problems such as asthma and bronchitis anyway that's all about the pros and the cons about living in korea that i wanted to share with you guys let me know what you think about these options that i've given you guys what do you think about the pros i've given and the cons i have given and if you are living in korea what what do you think what have you found interesting or bad or you didn't like about korea let's have a chat in the comment section and yeah thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next one